the commandant, the deputy commandant, chief instructors of the Army, Navy, and the Air Force wings, members of the faculty, senior officers, student officers from our friendly foreign nations, student officers of the Sri Lanka Army, Navy, and the Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. I consider it a great privilege and honor to stand here today at the same, very same college that I was graduated long years back and today to stand before you uh, in the capacity of Chief of Defense Staff and Commander of the Army. This prestigious institution is a nexus of wisdom where command, staff and instructor competencies are imparted on tri-service officers to hold bigger responsibilities in whatever the organization that you serve. Having said that, I pay my highest tribute to Defense Services and Command Staff, Command and Staff College for shaping me to some extent during my career. May not be the total, but to some extent during my career up to the rank of general. At the onset, let me remind you that you are completing, almost completing, one of the most important benchmarks of career of an officer. Therefore, it is up to you to thrive from here, taking the learning and molding from this institution as multipliers of your personality, professionalism, and the way of thinking, most importantly. I wish to mark a special note on student officers from our friendly foreign nations. The participation of international students adds color and quality to the course as it avails the student officers the opportunity to experience how the situation could be seen in different perceptions based on different cultural, educational, doctrinal, and personal variances. I'm sure that you have improved your theoretical, tactical, technical, and also conceptual knowledge during this one year or so. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me embark on our topic of the day that the role of armed forces in the contemporary security landscape. It is conventional wisdom that the security landscape is ever changing and cannot be framed into few apparent determinants. Therefore, we need to understand that we cannot merely win the next crisis with yesterday's experiences. The best example I can give you as of today is the present COVID-19 pandemic. We have ever, have you ever thought 
before, say, three years back, that a tiny virus would surpass all conventional security dimensions and hold the entire world on a standstill. I don't think any one of us expected this three years ago. It is, in, it is increasingly becoming evident that modern adversaries are unorthodox, less kinetic, less visible, yet devastatingly dangerous. The 20th century conventional war fighting between states has been replaced by conflicts within the states with roots and spillover effects to the other countries worldwide. Military pressure have been replaced with economic, diplomatic, and also psychological pressures, which are more challenging to fight. Ideology and narrative-based conflicts have become more prominent and complex to intervene. Interests of modern-day adversaries are achieved with more complex ways, means, and instruments of power rather than traditional weapon and men. The environment and uh, natural disasters have become increasingly frequent and catastrophic. We being in this part of the world, especially Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, we have experienced this than most of the other nations. This multifaceted and complex security challenges demand more systematic, comprehensive, and interwoven approaches and lines of operations rather than mere direct use of military force. Therefore, armed forces have happened to deal with more intricate military and non-military stakeholders, especially now we find the modern day role of armed, armed forces is expected to be highly professional, which is ready, relevant, reliable, resilient, and respectable. It could be five hours. Warfare and conflict are as old as existence of humankind, as you all aware. Even the ways and means have evolved to be more civilized today. Modernity, the prime reasons for warfare, remains the trinity of power, pride, and interest. Historically, the military has been the principal instrument of projecting power, preserving pride, and pursuing the interest of any entity whether it is a tribe, village, group, island, country or otherwise. Even though the legitimacy and humanity of military use remains questionable since then, the militaries have been the decisive instrument in statecraft where expansion shrinkages, the new demarcation, and creation of new states were dictated over war fighting. The human to instrument transition, the industrial revolution, and the thrift of new technologies add unprecedented concept, doctrines, ways and means of war fighting. In addition, the zero-sum realism increased lethality, brutality, devastation of military efforts 
by the 20th century. The two world wars shifted the paradigm, given enough indications for the states to have nation of credible, capable, and sufficient armed forces with the prime role to defend nation boundaries, protect vital national, their nation's resources, and safeguard people from state adversaries. The Cold War added a new dimension to the alignment of forces. New state alliances began to form against potential adversaries. The world militaries began to adopt technologies, weapons, doctrines, and concepts based on their alliances in Cold War. In addition, the beginning of United Nations and subsequent collective efforts to foster world peace added a new paradigm to world fighting which tried to canalize the war fighting into more legitimate, systematic, and rational use of force. The arms race between East and the West and the projection of the influence of power blocks through third unorthodox and non-state actors horrificated an uncontrolled amount of weapons and technologies Consequently, many parties other than the states in the East were weaponized. Consequently, non-state actors with the state began to achieve their objectives through military means. Thus, the nation of terror became the predominant security threat to the entire world. This began the gradual shifting of intrastate conflicts, interstate conflicts to intrastate conflicts. Therefore, the shape of armed forces inclined towards intervening in internal threats. Ladies and gentlemen, it has always been hard to know what is happening next in the ground. As the military theorist Karl Vaughan wrote in the fog of war two centuries ago. However, modern conflicts tends to haunt places that are even more inaccessible. Therefore, it is a very unwise and dangerous assumption to be comfortable with our capabilities when we won yesterday's war. We as mankind would always like to be comfortable when we have victories and we take assumption that we could just go ahead with that experience. Therefore, it is essential to stimulate our thinking to cover every possibility rather than depending on mere probability. We need to study contemporary conflicts if we are to overcome it. Therefore, constant awareness of the fine dynamism, dynamism and understanding the big picture is only way to design our force abreast of new challenges. We need to remember there are many options available to adversaries rather than conventional method. We are mostly ready. Extremi extremist groups today have unprecedented access to the general public, which allows for more efficient and effective recruitment. Propaganda and purchase of weapons and unregulated, especially we find money transfers. The exploitation of cyber domain has become one of the most effective ways of achieving the desired effects by the adversaries. 
This makes adversaries to reduce their signature, evade the traditional lines of defense, and achieve their aim. Even though begin, beginning prepared for conflict is incredibly costly, being unprepared for the next conflict is devastating, despite its probability. Conflicts are more likely in our countries with diverse ethnic religions, and communities. We have to remember that amidst the destruction of global trade due to COVID-19, the international weaponry industry thrives by 1.3% increases related to previous year. This was what I read this morning in, uh, I think, page 18 of Daily News. This is where we stand. In addition, actors outside the conflict can significantly influence war in both good and bad ways, usually for different gains than the face value of the conflict. Therefore, predicting the cause of conflict is harder since conflict actors invariably disguise their intentions. The global security environment over the shifting of power balance and economic center of gravity towards the Asia-Pacific region has created new security dimensions, especially to the developing countries like us. Often possible geostrategic traps are increasingly becoming complex to interpret. Present-day security concerns have substantially shaped by the separatism, extremism, and criminal activities around the globe, often waged through violence. In Sri Lanka, the Easter Sunday attack has left enduring security, political, and social effects. Therefore, it is necessary to maintain the military det detection capability we have to have that is why we are very concerned of the uh, security of specially uh, intelligence then preparedness and deterrence to prevent the first incident in democratic societies the size of the armed forces and defense budget demand reasonable justifications consequently the armed forces have to be evolved with the multifaceted capabilities and competencies underpinning the economy of military effort at modernity. The realities of the modern day security and operational environment shape, regulate and change the use of military force than ever before. I believe even over the next few years, the world will experience an intricate, unstable, unpredictable, and dynamic security environment. This is what I believe as of now with the experience that we see here. Ladies and gentlemen, the nature of conflicts and the security environment changes with many controllable and also uncontrollable factors. However, the fact remains that we need to change according to the environment if we need to survive. The geostrategic location of itself absorbed multifaceted an array of threats externally and internally that would undermine the national security architecture of Sri Lanka. I'm sure that not only the Sri Lankan officers of armed forces, but all others, our friendly foreign uh, nation students will also understand our location and the importance of it. The dangerous ideology-based conflicts and the violent extremism, which usually are the spillover effects of conflicts overseas and consequently inspired local and that fights for the one, oneness of the God, considering 
non-believers as inflates pose a substantial threat to our national security. Another threat is transnational crimes or the hub of scandals over which a large number of illegal activities happen. We find ex every day, in especially the northern, north, uh, central parts, this is happening. Focusing on the country, there's a possibility that the western and the eastern power blocks would engage in security competition on ideological war for dominance in the Indian Ocean region, which would probably be waged over economic, diplomatic, proxy or military means. This will potentially pose a collateral yet substantial security threat to Sri Lanka in time to come. Therefore, efforts to achieve complete national security over mere tactical operations and victory over fraction of adversaries have no meaning. Beyond traditional threats to security, fears have arisen in response to new but, but, uh, new but less visible dangerous. This includes potential problems derived from climate change, transnational crimes, cyber terrorism, and issues of uncertainty, special economic stagnation, and devastating pandemics like what we are experiencing these days. Demarcating the actual law perceived threat at modernity, traditional and non-traditional, and drawing lines between these threats is cumbersome. Therefore, preparing for such an unpredictable eventuality requires very significant human, material, and technological changes. As the form of warfare evolves, adversaries are actively adjusting their ends, ways, and the means, which much more sophistication. In such, the conditions we will not be able to be away from ground realities. As such, being the chief of defense staff and the commander of the army, I always rely upon the reliance on the likelihood of the enemies or its failure should not be the cause for the preparedness of our own forces. I have been telling, this is not the first time, from the time I became the commander, I have been repeating this statement. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sri Lanka military has a long-led identity as a nation's survivor because the military has intervened in every operational and non-operational emergency and brought back the country to the normalcy. Even now, it is the Sri Lanka Army Navy Air Force that brought the pandemic, the COVID-19, up to this level, thanks to the three forces supported by health, police, and the people of this great nation. We are proud that the citizens of Sri Lanka appreciate our sacrifices and contributions towards our motherland. The people of Sri Lanka expects the military will be the ultimate survivor of their lives, properties, and the interest in time to come too. That we realize wherever we go in this country, with the respect that they give the uniform staff of Sri Lanka. As an emerging country, it is not required to understand that the security paradigm has transformed and it's ever-changing, but still 
people's demand for conducive security environment for the country's advancement remains the same. Therefore, Sri Lankan military forces now cannot expand it for singular threat, but it has to be developed to traverse over the entire spectrum of threats that we will face in the future. Therefore, the concept, doctrines, capabilities, and especially the capacities we currently possess may not be adequate, and we need to readjust. This is for all three forces. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand a few critical questions today. What is the threat perception we should be prepared for? I'm sure your learning at this college would have given you enough knowledge and wisdom to understand this. What level will the armed forces be utilized? Different governments may use differently. As of today, we see that we are being utilized for many things. From 2nd of this month, we have been tasked, have been appointed as head of green agriculture in Sri Lanka, which we never expected such type of task. That is the confidence that the nation has. That is the confidence that the leaders of this nation has in regard to the military in Sri Lanka. Under what environment, freedom and restriction will the armed forces be operating in time to come is a question. Most importantly, what, up, what part of the conflict will the military will be used as an instrument within the overall security architecture? This will guide the armed forces to predict who will fight, with whom they will fight, where they will fight, and what equipment they will have to possess. In this regard, a rigid one-size-fitting force structure will not be great in any organization. Therefore, frequent revisit and validation of the perceived threats are vital to readjust the ways and means to achieve desired military ends. The modern force structure is required to be versatile to overreach the challenges across the gamut of conflicts to foster an enduring national security. As future operations seems to be launching mostly over cross-domain, the military needs to reflect as a capable body that can cooperate with other law enforcement agencies and especially other line ministries. If we are not compatible to cooperate with other instruments of national power for a united effort, we will leave irreversible gaps in our, our national security architecture in this extremely complex security landscape. I believe unity is the tool that gives us the confidence to achieve the unachievable. The Sri Lankan officers here must would have known from the day one of the pandemic COVID-19, I have been talking the unity should be the strength. And if so, nothing impossible. This had been the motto of me during last not only during last two years with the pandemic, from the day I started my command, 
it was with this broader appreciation the sri lanka army way forward strategy 2020 2025 was formulated on initiative by me end last year as a key to realize this comprehensive strategy the military leaders need to have a comprehensive knowledge and understanding of how countries govern and how the way forward strategy 2020-25 fits His Excellency, the President and Government's vistas of prosperity and splendor agenda. And the role of armed forces in that, it is very important for us to understand. Therefore, I believe our training needs to stimulate an objective oriented thinking. Very important to have objective oriented thinking habit that could understand the philosophy of today's security environment and the force structure and capability fitting to it. Ladies and gentlemen, with the establishment of the vistas of prosperity and splendor agenda, the armed forces of Sri Lanka have concentrated an attainable direction to draw strategic military objectives. We need to understand the approaches, approach to security and defense have changed and advanced so that it is feasible to keep peace with challenging security dynamics. Now it is imperative to revive the priorities and focus on developing our armed forces, intelligent, dedicated, and responsive enough to deliver the desired effects of the grand strategic level. In this recent past, the military was conducting missions that were particularly not pertaining to war fighting. And it will be the most probable cause in the future to the way things are happening. And we have to understand we have a small economy. We can't have our forces, the way certain rich armies, rich countries are having. Therefore, we might, the successive government might touch the Sri Lankan armed forces for what we had not been even trained all these years. Thus, our armed forces used to be fully trained, adequately resourced, and empowered with necessary legal coverage for these different roles as what we see, however we must do. Some spectacles, some eyes won't see the way that we do. It is no secret what we have experienced even after 11 years of the conflict, 12 years after the conflict, some see differently of armed forces, including me. Unfortunate, but we will not be changed. We will not change our policies. We have fought to bring peace to the nation. Others can see differently than the way that they think. Unfortunate, some, the way they think, the way they see, they won't practice. In addition, the new strategy underpins the responsibility, accountability, and unfortunately, with the international legal framework from the institutional level up to the execution level by utilizing the armed forces for clearly defined and justifiable, justifiable objectives. At present, Sri Lanka Army, especially being the commander, is maintaining the high level of battle preparedness. I'm sure all three forces are the same on contingencies while introducing various training modules and exercises that are more refined, objective oriented, and especially timely. Equally necessary measures are now in place to face any security challenge in our best capacity incorporating most modern warfare techniques 
and based on our own experiences gained during three decades long conflict with the LTTE. Remember, be it in war or peace, a soldier is always prepared to face seemingly undefendable challenges. In conclusion, Sri Lanka is presently leaping forward in a positive journey amidst numerous challenges originating in local and international context. The economic advancement, reduction of corruption, constructive engagement against alleged war crimes, revitalization the foreign policy towards win-win philosophy, promoting meaningful reconciliation, strengthening of national security metrics, social economic development, recently erupted pandemic situation or what we will face even in the future, and consequent economic retardation are challenges now table before the government of Sri Lanka. It is widely understood that the multi-array of security challenges demands integrating all instruments of national power into focused effort. In this regard, there has be to be firm understanding of the strategic environment by the military leaders like you all. You all face more challenging, demanding things in time to come than what we experienced in the past and what we are experiencing right now. Thus, the officers today should try to acquire a more sophisticated, sophisticated understanding of the integration of all elements of national power and military contribution in pursuit of national objectives. The Sri Lanka Army is capable of developing and maintaining a prosperous, sustainable Sri Lanka. We are capable. Ladies and gentlemen, soon you will be embarking on the new appointments. Especially will be announced this afternoon or soon after me by the Assistant Military Secretary. Having attributed of being past half college, considering your capabilities and your performances at the staff college during last one year. Therefore, you are expected to have a better, clear and focused understanding of today's security context and the role of envisage what by your commander, staff officer or instructor. Here and after, you are expected to be highly dedicated committed and provide novel, creative, and specially innovative recommendations for complex military problems. F further, I encourage you to serve the country with the highest degree of integrity, honor, valor, and dignity to uphold the excellent reputation your respective services have built upon over the years. This has not, this reputation has not come overnight. With hard work of the previous, those who have served and gone, with those who are serving now. So therefore, remember, a true leader is a person of ethics, integrity, and highest moral values. Your level of enthusiasm and commitment to qualify more in your profession whilst rendering what you have learnt here to the nation will dictate how far you will go in your military journey. I take this opportunity to offer special thanks to the Commandant and the staff of the Defence Services and Command and Staff College 
for their untiring efforts to uplift and maintain standards of this esteemed training institution to the most conducive level for military education. And also for molding you all to where you stand today to pass out with the qualification of staff college at the staff, past staff. Last but not the least, let me express my regards to the students, student officers of friendly foreign nations. I extend my best wishes to you all to excel in your future endeavors. I have given, I think, 40 minutes, so I'm there, 40 and 32 seconds. So let me once again wish all of you the very best for the forthcoming graduation from Defense Services and Command and Staff College. My blessings are always with you to reach the pinnacle of successes in your military service in the years to come. Thank you. The topic that I was given, and I'm prepared to take on any questions with the time assigned by your commandant and the directing staff. Yes, please. Good morning, sir. I'm Commander Iftikhar Ahmed from Pakistan Navy, sir. So the prime responsibility of the armed forces is to ensure the territorial integrity and protect the aerial uh, boundaries. But you very rightly pointed out that nowadays the military pressure is being shifted to the economic and the diplomatic pressures. So my question is, uh, will these duties will be assigned to the armed forces to fight on these two fronts? If yes, then what are the ways and means available to the armed forces to protect these two fronts? And the last thing is, sir, that uh, will the civil bureaucracy accept this uh, responsibility to be assigned to the armed forces? Because we have heard so many voices in the Colombo regarding KDU bill that education is being mili militarized. So there are so many hurdles uh, in fulfilling uh, these duties as well, sir. Thank you, what sir. What are the two areas that you mentioned? Uh, areas regarding, uh, I said that the, there are against the KDU bill, the people are saying that education is being militarized, which I think it is wrong because in Pakistan, we okay, are having the you. education system. I understand. Thank you for your question. Thank you for participating in the course also from Pakistan Navy. Of course, this is, I think, due to the lack of knowledge of what is KDU and what we are doing there. And also, it is not one, some part, of course, lack of knowledge. For some other people, maybe different agendas. Uh, I don't think that uh, what some people talk about, this militarization and things like that, that is purely uh, some segment of some political parties brought this topic not the people of the country, that is for their own gains. When they have no topics to talk at times, people try to get into this type of topics. But everybody, I think, I'm sure whether you all got a idea, you got a knowledge of what KDU is doing there. So there can be things like that in the country Different types, this is a democratic country. People should be allowed to express their views, go on streets, express their views. But uh, we have taken enough, uh, I ca can't say precaution, but we have, we are trying to uh, inform the public of those especially who are not aware of what is these institutions are doing. Uh, I feel that as I started off, it's not nearly the knowledge. I believe that it is because uh, different 
interest. They have brought this word. But uh, in the meantime, one must understand even when we started off with COVID-19, when I was appointed as head of the COVID-19 in Sri Lanka, they said, why a military leader? But beyond doubt, we have proved that we have proven that it was the right decision by the president. This afternoon, I will announce that we have finished the task of the COVID-19, although we find uh, cases coming here and there, few numbers. We have, the government of Sri Lanka had done with both vaccines, given to 98% of the eligible population, given the booster. So this is all one can do. On that, we have to take precautions. So even that task was criticized. But later, the people of this nation highly accepted, accepted that it is because of the military that Sri Lankan military that we are here today, given the pandemic. So I think these are things that uh, certain people, we've, during my speech also I mentioned, not only here, some even different countries view us differently, can't help uh, due, due to maybe pressures that they get at times. Uh, they may think like that. We can't blame them also. But uh, we should know what we are doing. To do the right thing, we have in single term, no? To sit on ground or to sleep, you don't have to worry. Okay? So it's like that. To do the right thing, you don't have to worry. There will be for a short period, there can be some certain try to, people will try to bring uh, the population to a different mode. But in time to come, it will learn. So do nothing to worry. We have a lot of KDF students also here and also these type of institutions. Yeah. Good morning, sir. I'm Major Malik from uh, Senegal. Uh, sir, thank you for your lecture. Sir, uh, during your lecture, you uh, truly highlight the, that the, in the future, the army should be ready and also uh, uh, reliable. So uh, with uh, uh, multi-phase capacity and co uh, competency. So to face, in fact, the human threat like uh, uh, pandemics, uh, cybersecurity, and uh, environmental, environmental threat. My question is, sir, how uh, a developing country can uh, 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 be ready, in fact, to be reliable and, and ready to face all these threats uh, while balancing, in fact, the uh, economic cost of maintaining a huge uh, army, sir? Thank you. Uh, yeah, irrespective of uh, which type of economy that you have in the country, even Sri Lanka, I told that we have a limited economy, but the governments, the leaders of the nation will understand the priorities of the nation, and especially the priorities of the importance of the armed forces. So even like your country or my country, although we would like to have everything what we would like to have on this uh, earth, we may not have like what some uh, countries have got. But still, we have shown the rest of the world being a limited economy, being a country of a uh, small economy. We have finished the most ruthless terrorists in the world. We did not have everything what we would have had by another large organized large army in another country. But it is the tactics, it is the resources, how meaningful that we have used. Innovation, I was talking the last few sentences for you all, what we expect out of you all. These are the ways that the army can bring results. The leaders of the army or the Navy or the Air Force should understand the economy of the nation. 
and still you know what is your as i mentioned at the beginning you can understand what type of threat that you will have you need to have for such threats only or beyond you can't have everything what another army has got so i'm sure that that is why this type of colleges give you the wisdom knowledge and also for you to think and to be creative we have seen in our war for three decades i have experience enough i remember one experience when i had to cross the one of the lagoons in uh, putumathalan and it's too deep we can't put boats because the ltt was on the other side i still remember everybody is not there was a canal it's more than 8 feet so you can't walk across that also so i was thinking as to how we are going to go without the knowledge of terrorist swim across to the other side i remember then 11 cli ceo now retired general kitsiri eganayaka at that time a lieutenant colonel who came forward he from my school and your amadan school also he came and told me that we can use the mortar empty case fixed from both side where you can swim a man can swim across with that empty case with air tight i started doing that and most of our soldiers of my division it was the task the large humanitarian what is the rescue mission operation that we did it was only five eight division troops with some special forces troops and commandos we went across like that at that time so my memories went back with your question so that is how it is we have to understand we are born to a country where and serving in organization where we will not have all sophistication which your brother officer is having in his or her army or their organization but that is why the military leaders are all about if we get everything what is there beyond that we want we are not getting everything when we started with the pandemic different governments what is uh, may use different uh, it is covid thing also most of the thing we did not know but we learn on the job equipment of course certain things we will not have but the country will give you if at all it is required that is how it is okay you are finished now but the country will give you if at all it is required that is how it is okay